Hi there everyone, it's Misty here from the Jolly Fat Elf. Thank you so much for joining me. Welcome to part two of my one stamp three ways. If you missed it, I posted part one. We are, I am using the Mop Head Hydrangea from Picket Fence Studio. This is a beautiful stamp. And if you guys remember, I used one of their succulent stamps to make a poinsettia years ago. I've colored their peony stamp. These huge oversized florals are probably some of my favorite. Now in the last video, I used watercolor pens. I used like five or six colors to color that floral. I love it, <laughs> obsessed with those cards. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you how you can get dimension, etc., with one marker. So we're using one blue marker and one green marker to color today's image. So if you're interested in that, don't forget to subscribe. Feel free to follow me over on Instagram. I'm at Misty Bands. No, I'm not. I'm at the job. <laughs> I am also at Misty Bands, but that's makeup. So if you're interested in makeup, there you go. If you haven't already, I hope you'll consider checking out my D stash. Please and thank you. I'm trying to get rid of some things so I can do a craft room tour. Um, and right now they're all in baskets on my desk, so you can check that out. If you want to make me an offer, feel free. I do ship internationally. Blah, 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 blah. All that information is linked in the description box down below, along with the direct link to the stamp. Now, I do not use affiliate links as of right now. I do have something I will bill you. But anyway, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> If you like this series, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think of these cards in the comments down below. Let's head over to the craft table before I sit here and go any more. Lord have mercy on my soul. <laughs> All right, friends, I am starting this image as I did the last one. I used an anti-static tool to remove static from my piece of watercolor paper. I've stamped with VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. I've gone over it with some clear embossing powder, and then I'm going to heat that embossing powder with my heat tool until it's completely melted. Now, this is sped up 800 times, so it doesn't necessarily go this fast, <laughs> but it is still a pretty fast and quick process. Now, as I mentioned in the last video, I highly recommend using clear embossing powder rather than trying to use black embossing powder. Black embossing powder can really get all over everything and get everywhere, and it's just easier that way. So I am using one of the light blue markers. And as I mentioned in the intro, I'm gonna share with you how you can color and get dimension with just one marker. So I'm starting at the center and adding in the darkest amount of color. And then I'm just gonna use my water tool, um, my water pen to blend it out, um, getting a lighter as we move toward the tip of the flower or the petal. So again, this is a hydrangea. This is the color you see more often for hydrangeas. Um, hydrangeas really depend on the pH of the soil for their color. Um, although I do think that there is some manipulation that you can do. And yeah, but I, yeah, hydrangeas are gorgeous. I love hydrangeas, but I also love bougainvillea. And I think they're very similar in their look, but they grow a little bit differently. So you don't need fancy markers like this to a color, although these are not as expensive as the Zig ones, of course, but you can also use a water-based ink, a dye-based ink. If you have dye-based ink, I have probably 40 videos on the channel over the years where I've used ink pads to watercolor, um, and you don't even need one of these aqua pens. You really only need like a regular, um, paintbrush that'll do the same trick if you wanted this to be a bit more um, sparkly you could use an empty wink of stella or an empty nouveau shimmer pen um, and just add some water inside of that and use that to uh watercolor which is another video i'm sure i have somewhere on the channel so there's a lot of ways that you can color with watercolors without actually having to own watercolors if you're someone like me who has a lot of inks <laughs> You could 100% use those as well. I will say that hybrid inks will work, but they don't work nearly as well. Um, they are a little bit harder to blend with water, and that's because they are a hybrid of pigment and um, a watercolor ink. So they take a little bit longer to um, blend, and it can make uh, your water, or excuse me, your paper oversaturated. Now, I will say this paper held up really well to extra water. Um, I didn't have any pilling. I didn't have any issues with um, 
like it becoming oversaturated. This was actually really high quality watercolor paper. And I need to look to see if they sell this separately because um, this actually came with the set of markers. And if I didn't mention it in the last video, this actually had sketches on it, which I didn't realize until the last video, <laughs> until I was making the last set of cards. I'm like, wait a minute, this has, this has a sketch on it? What do we, why does this have a sketch on it? What are we doing? <laughs> so yeah. So anyway, I'm just adding in some of the water pen. And again, I'm adding the uh, actual watercolor pen, the ink, where the, um, like the center of the florals are and also where the, um, where the petals overlap and this again this was something i just sat down and started filming like i did, uh, not even filming just sat down and started creating and happened to have the camera going and i'm glad i did because i'm i really 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 love the um three sets of cards that i made this one especially because in person there's just so much dimension and to know that it was done with just one marker is just kind of insanity for me um, and I only used one color for the leaf as well when we get there. So as I mentioned these will probably be available in the Etsy shop in the next few weeks. Um, I have a couple other things I have going on before I can sit down and really get the get the Etsy shop caught up. Um, if you haven't already, don't forget you can check out my D stash that is linked in the description box down below. I mentioned it at the beginning. Um, so this video is going up on Saturday the 10th. And as of right now, I still have a lot left. So yeah, if you're interested. And like I said before, if there's anything that you want or if there's a bundle of things that you want, just reach out to me. Feel free to make me an offer. Um, if it's one that I feel comfortable with taking, I will accept. If not, I may counter and ask you to come back with something else. Or if you just want to say... You know, just buy as is, that's, that's something that you can do as well. So once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and clean off my water brush on the um, paper towel that I've kept beside my desk. That is a dry paper towel, and that's the easiest way to clean off your water brush is to just wipe it on a dry paper towel. That's a good way to also um, take away some of the uh, water. So if it's too wet, if you feel like you're getting too much water, then you can do that as well. And here I am taking this outside of the lines of the um, drawing because I know that I'm going to cut this out and that it's not going to matter. For the backdrop. Rather than doing blue around the outside of it, I've decided to do pink. And I really love how this looks as well. Um, I have it right in front of me. It just gives it a really nice soft look. Um, this could be, uh, you know, a sunset if you're in a place where you get these kind of painted colors in the sun, like Oklahoma. Some parts of Texas, I think, does it as well. And there may be other places. I'm not very well traveled. I mean, well traveled. We've, I've done mostly the East Coast, so. But I know Oklahoma has really gorgeous sunsets, um, from growing up there. And again, I am just going around the whole entirety of the flower, um, and around the edges, which I know will be cut off. I'm not being quite as, um, diligent about staying in lines, etc. I am trying to make sure that I don't pull the um, blue, um, excuse me, the pink into the blue or the green. So once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and bring in a couple of dyes from Hello Bluebird. Um, these are um, half circle dyes. Oh, it looks like I'm going to use yellow in, the, in them first though. And then just going back over and blending out where I feel like it may... Um, need a bit more water. So all in all, this took me probably about 35-40 minutes to color. The last one took a little over an hour. Um, so again, something where I just turn on a podcast or turn on a, um, a YouTube video or something like that, put on some Netflix and I just just create while that's going in the background. So these are the half, half circle dies from Hello Bluebird. I'm using the next to largest one to cut out two half circles from this image. 
And then the larger one you see, I'm going to use to cut out some cardstock that's going to go behind these half circles. And I decided to keep with the color. So I'm using pink and um, a light blue. And I just use, this is some tape runner I pick up off Amazon. So I am bringing in a pad from my favorite things. This is their spring houndstooth. And it just so happens to have two of these light blue images. So I'm going to use that. And then I'm going to bring in a scalloped rectangle die from Stamp Anything. This is from the card mat dies. And I'm going to use that to cut out two. Now, when I cut out two pieces of paper at one time, to make it a little bit of a quicker process, I will use washi tape to adhere them together. And then I will run it through. And that way they both cut at the exact same time. You don't want to really go any more than this, especially if you're using a stitch die, because then you may lose some of the stitching um, and it may not cut all the way through. And it took me a minute to get it straight. You guys know me. If you've been with me for a while, you know that I'm already a little crooked. So I have I have to take every opportunity that I have to make sure that I do my best not to be crooked. So I'm going to bring in the same color cardstock. I believe, I want to say this is Cotton Candy by My Favorite Things. And I've cut a piece down to four and a quarter by, well, I've squirted at five and a half and then cut it down to four and a quarter by 11. Um, that way they are both scored. Then I'm just adhering the houndstooth pattern down flat. And then I'm going to bring in some Scotch mounting foam. If you guys heard me complain in the last video about mounting foam, I found some on Amazon that is the old style. So I don't know how you figure out which one is which, but yeah. So anyway, once I get these adhered, that's going to be it for this set of cards. So thank you so much for joining me today, friends. I really do appreciate you. Um, leave me a comment letting me know which has been your favorite so far, if you like these more bluey tones or if you like the more bright and vibrant ones from the last video. And I will see you Tuesday for the last set of cards. Bye for now.